This is Join Us in France, episode 243. Bonjour, I'm Annie Sargent, and Join Us in France is the podcast where you will hear pragmatic advice about your next trip to France. And hopefully, you'll get inspired to go beyond Paris and enjoy the rest of France, although today, we're staying in Paris. <laughs> On the podcast, I invite travel enthusiasts, such as my friend Patricia Perry, to join me for a conversation about Paris, because... Patricia is an American who lives in Paris, and she knows the city really, really well. And I'm recording this from her apartment with different uh, microphones, so the sound might be a little bit different, but hopefully it'll be good enough. Okay, let's see. Oh, and I'm using a trackpad, too, for the, um, a weird device that I've never used before, too. Uh, the show notes and photos for this episode are on joinusinfrance.com forward slash 243. Bonjour, Patricia. Bonjour, Annie. How are you? Very well. Good to have you here. You know, so nice to be here with you. So we are, uh, today we're talking about visiting uh, cookware stores in France, or maybe you could call them kitchenware. What's the right word? Yeah. Kitchenware, kitchen supply store. Kitchen supply store, yeah. And there's a bunch of them in Paris, right around Les Halles. And we thought it would make for a good episode because you can probably... Visit all of them in what an hour an or hour. two? Yeah, an hour or two, depending. Yeah, on depending on how much how time you spend. you spend in each store. But you could do this in two hours. And Lial is very central Paris. It's extremely easy to get to. So if you are a, a cook or somebody who wants to become Julia Child, <laughs> 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 this is what you need to do. So we're going to start with this uh, uh, place uh, called Du Bruit dans la Cuisine which means noise in the kitchen. And I didn't like it as much as the others. Yeah, it's the French version of Sur la Table or William Sonoma. It's, right. it's the closest counterpart uh, that you will find in the U.S. Right, and it's very much like that. It's like, eh, yeah, too much. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't find too much soul in there. Let's put yeah, it it's more way. general, not, not specialized. Most of the other stores have some sort of specialty. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's, not, like, it's not different from things you could see in America. True. You know, I yeah. mean, you could get all that stuff in America, I'm quite sure. But it's still worth a visit because it's quite, I mean, it's on the surface uh, yeah. around Les Halles. So it's very easy to find. So if you're facing Les Halles, It's on your right. I don't remember if I went but right. It's, it's, up on, it's up top. It's easy to find. Yeah, it's on, yeah. But it is up top. It's, it's, on the, it's on the ground level. Yeah. Do not go down into the labyrinth. <laughs> <laughs> Although the labyrinth can be pretty good too. All right. So our second stop is actually the reason why you went with your friend. It's called Deco Relief. Yeah, and this is a store that really specializes in things for pastry chefs. So all kinds of little uh, molds and frou-frou things and specialty boxes and decorations that people that are into making pastry. And my friend uh, Sherry Kwan from Taiwan is selling some new type of molds that are made from fiberglass and silicon. And uh, they were interested in uh, perhaps buying these from her. Yeah. So we, It was wonderful. It was the first store we went to, and they, boom, they were interested. They in, loved it. They loved it. So <laughs> I'm hoping she gets a, a good sale out of that. Yeah, so I have plenty of photos to remind us. Let's see, because I went back later and took a lot of photos. So let's see. So we're talking about, bear with us, everybody. Uh, it was called uh, Deco Bidule. <laughs> Oh, didn't I take photos of Deco Bidule? Maybe I didn't. Maybe yeah. I skipped it. Oh, it looks like I might have skipped that one because I don't have any photos of it. Mm, pull some off the internet. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Anyway, but you, you thought it was good. 
Yeah, I mean, if you're into pastry, these are all the kinds of things that uh, somebody that likes to make pastry would would need. Yeah. Whether you're professional or just a high-end amateur person, but all kinds of things that I didn't know what they were for. Yeah, the little bits and bobs you need. <laughs> you know, teeny tiny little truc. And uh, yeah, a petit blanchet individuel et des trucs yeah. et des chouettes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then we then you went to Mora. Yeah, which is a... Uh, once again, they had quite a few pastry things too, and a lot of little French things. So, uh, you know, it's a huh. uh, it's a good store. It's just uh, maybe you know fifty meters down the street. Like you say, these are all very close together, and none of the shops are very big, so they yeah. don't take long unless uh, you're looking for something in particular. Right. And, uh, yeah, Mora was. Let's see. Oh, yeah. It was also. It also had a lot of pastry kind of yeah, things. Yeah, I would say not as much as... It had more than just pastry things, but many pastry things. Yeah, some, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, here's like the little... Um, like the little decorative sparkles and whatever that you can't really find in a that's French true. They, grocery They have one little alley that has like the packaging for, you know, what they... These fancy little gold boxes to put things in and the little decorative things they put on top of pastries. So. Mm -hmm. Like if you want stuff to make escargot, well, yeah. you can get it there, the serving things. They have all the pots and pans and they have your spatulas. And fancy knives. And yeah, and they have some really nice uh, copper, copper, yeah, yeah. copper stuff. I was like, wow, that's nice looking. I, have you ever cooked with copper? I don't... I don't it's, I think it's just, I mean, it's beautiful and it works well, but you're, in terms of maintenance, a lot higher maintenance than, you know, right. stainless steel. So it would probably just, just decorative, maybe. Yeah, you can use it, but you yeah. have to take, you take care. Yeah, so I'm looking through my photos of uh, Mora, and it's, you know, a lot of uh, molds to, to yeah. make, um, yeah, like if you want to take home some molds to make Madeleine, well, you'd find them really easily at any of those stores. Yeah, financier, Madeleine, so classical French small Yeah, pastries. les cannelés. Les cannelés. They have all these mm. shapes uh, that, that you need, uh, the soufflé or... Oh, quenelle. So quenelle mm. is a uh, dish from, from Lyon. Lyon. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, a, it's a funky shape. And you can yeah. buy this, uh, the little silicone mold to make this, or to make all sorts of truffles. But it's savory, not sweet. It is savory, yes. Yeah, it's yes. Fish mostly. Yeah, it's usually like it's a mix of bread mm -hmm. and milk and or cream and fish. And it's molded. Uh, and they also sell the little uh the little um wedding cake toppers. So they have uh, some black couples, but they don't have unisex couples yet. We're working on it. We're working on it. <laughs> they'll, they'll get there eventually, I think. Um, okay, the next one we went to, well, we, I, I walked past Bovida, but it was closed, closed. for it's renovations. Good. But you went Yeah, in. I went there, but and they were basically destocking everything, trying to sell everything off their shelves because they're doing a major renovation inside the store, so... Uh, and and they have a good, ver they've got like two, it's like at least two stories, and they have a, a good selection of professional type equipment, you know, knives and molds, and uh, it's a good it's a good selection of specialty objects. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's cool. And then I went to this place called G de Tout, so G de, de Tout, <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny because in French it means. J'ai de tout. I have some of everything, <laughs> which is, I, it's adorable. But they really do. It's like, it's, they're funky. They have. It's ancient. Yeah. It's, it's tiny and ancient. It's not very big. You go in there and they have, okay, let me, let me play these photos because it's for, so it says it's pour la, tout pour la pâtisserie et la cuisine. So all for pastry, cooking and, and, and cuisine. Yeah. Um, so they will have like tripou. it's a very specialized mm -hmm. French and so they have cans of these specialized like regional foods uh -huh. that we don't really eat that much anymore but they have confit mm -hmm. de poule um, they have cou de canard gras farci so it's a, it's a, nut, it's a, it's a deck a, a, the neck of a duck yeah. that's been stuffed Oh. And this is something that they sell a lot in the Southwest. It's, a, it's something that people love. I grew up 
uh, I had a good friend whose mother made duck products, and so yeah. I've enjoyed it at her so house. All parts and pieces of the duck. Right, <laughs> so kai farci, so yeah, that's like a, a stuffed yeah. quail yeah. in a can. Uh, boudin du pays, so if you want like black yeah. sausage, yeah. To, yeah. Blood to, sausage yeah. blood sausage to take back to America, <laughs> it's, it's in a can. So on any of these cans things, I think would yeah, you'd be fine. Yeah, you won't have any problems, yeah, taking, have any them problems problem. taking them home. So they have all sorts of pâtés yeah. uh, made from, you know, boar and uh, what, what am I looking at? Uh, duck and the uh, pâté de Montmarsan. So it's a it's a town in France. So if oh. you want, <laughs> they make a special yeah. flavor. So you know, it, it's it's like cr- just crazy. Uh, la garbure landaise. I have never eaten that. Like it's it's, it's a weird mm-hmm. thing. Um, of course, duck fat, yes. which if you're oh, a serious yes. oh, cook, yeah. you yeah, need to supply. Yeah, you need the <laughs> duck fat. You, I mean, I always have a thing of duck fat in my fridge. And then they sell all these specialty mustards. So mustard with uh, moutarde à l'estragon, moutarde at everything, uh, you know. Uh, but you know there's a, a, a Maya store on Place de Madeleine that has all, they have which a would be thousand different kinds of uh, mustard there too. That would be good, but just the one brand. It looks like it's the, all the one brand anyway. Yeah. So all sorts of, you know, truffle mustards yeah. and stuff. And I think those make for nice good gifts, gifts yeah. uh, because they're very French and... Uh, so long as you have a checked bag, you'd be fine. You need a checked bag for this because mm-hmm. it's kind of not solid. So they would confiscate, I'm pretty yeah. sure, if it was in a, in a carry-on. Uh, let's see. Yeah, moutard de pommery. Really things that uh, mustard with walnuts, with uh, estragon. So that's estragon. How do you say that in English? Uh, it's uh, uh, Tarragon. Tarragon, that's right. Uh, anyway, just... Uh, Cassis, yeah, moutarde au cassis de Dijon, <laughs> moutarde de Dijon au vin blanc, moutarde au basilic, so basil mustard, you know, also, uh, and they also have, of course, uh, all sorts yeah, of com- jams, yeah. des compotes, des, 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 des confitures, jams, um, that are a big thing in France, uh, well, in most countries, really. Anyway, it's a very small store, and they also sell nuts and decorative and things for your pastries. And all kinds of chocolate. Yes, for chocolate baking. things, yes, yeah, baking. So if you do baking with chocolate, you'll find whatever kind of chocolate you want there. Right, but I, especially, I, I took a lot of photos of stuff that people might want to take home. Mm-hmm. So anyway, if you have a gourmet cook uh, that you know and that you need a gift for, I think G2 would be a good place to go because they really have a ton of uh, things. And they were pretty friendly too. They, some of these, because I took so many photos, some of them were like, what are you doing, lady? And these, they were, they were just smiling at me. But of course, I, tell, I told them, you know, like, yeah, wow, some this is cool. People will talk about you. Yeah, well, I didn't, I didn't explain that, yeah. but I, I never do. But the, I just said, you know, wow, people really eat like that, <laughs> eat that stuff still? And they're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, people eat that stuff. It's not that surprising. So moving on to the next one, it was uh, Simon. Ah, Simon, ah, Simon. Yeah. Uh, not very far. Again, it's probably a three-minute walk between all these, all these stores. It's it's really impressive how, and Simon is is more of a uh, kind of a cooking store, like as in. But the, it was the only one that had like china and glasses. That's true. And, uh, the others did not. It was the only one. Well, maybe there's had a little bit, but this one really had some. Some, right. some higher end. Yes, yeah, silverware. Uh, and not Limoges or uh, not, uh, you know, but nice stuff. Yeah, and, and they had all these salt and pepper and shakers. shakers. And oh, uh, oh, it was coffee grinders. Coffee grinders. Yeah. So you recognize this, right? Yeah. Were they the same in America? Uh, well, you can get that style. Okay, it's okay. Kind of an old style. Kind of a tiny, crank, uh, a coffee a grinder with a crank on yeah, it. On a little wooden box. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, they have all sorts of, you know, French-made graters, and uh, they had pots and pans, some of them French-made, some of them imported. You know, there's some of everything. They had Le Creuset, obviously. Mm -hmm. They had, again, all these silicone little Mm -hmm. molds to make all sorts of shapes, uh, molds to make uh, candy, yeah, chocolates, you know, like where you... 
um, fondue pots. Uh, they really had a lot of stuff. I mean, a lot of this stuff would be heavy, though. When it, I mean, like it's big and heavy, not yeah, easy to transport. Like le creuset, okay, I understand that you might want one, but I mean, I have one at home. Yeah, and cocotte the creuset. Oof. Yeah, but it's heavy. Like uh, they, uh, one thing that I saw that I think is interesting is they had these uh, the cloche à fromage. Yeah. So it's like a board with a yeah, fitted, glass. Just fitted glass. We are fitted glass or plastic. So obviously, if I was to put it in my suitcase, I'd probably get the plastic. But it's it's very French because it's something that you know when you serve your cheese right, right. before you serve it actually you take it out of the fridge hour, yeah. to to let it go to room temperature and so the so the flies don't attack it because remember we don't have screens in this country so you have to have a cloche over it you have to have something over it to keep the keep the flies from attacking your so yeah f- French made pots and. Uh, Oh, they had olive wood. Yeah, pretty uh, olive wood utensils. Utensils, which I don't know if you find that everywhere. Maybe you do. You find cheap wooden stuff, but I think nice, yeah. made out of nice wood, it's harder to find. Yeah, and like cutting boards, uh, yeah. or they had really expensive uh, coffee yeah. cups, yeah. like 21 euros, 70 cents for one coffee cup. I thought that was a bit much. I don't know it's so all cheaper at Ikea. Yeah, but it's got like, it's probably gold on the rim. Yeah. You can't, you can't put it in the microwave, you know. That's probably with true. With the metal. That's probably true. Yeah, anyway, they, they look very good. Yeah. And then the last stop uh, on this walk is Des Ilorins. Des Ilorins, very famous. This is probably the most famous of all because it looks so bizarre in there. <laughs> Tell us about it. Yeah, when you walk in, it looks like a kind of a big old barn. Everything's wooden. The shelves are wooden, and they um, and everything's just kind of laid out on these wooden benches. There's no prices on yeah. them, and so to find out like what it really is or what it costs, you go down to the end of that row, and if you're lucky, there's a little catalog there with a number on it, which you would have had to find the number on that little little thing you look it up on that sheet and then it tells you the price which might be the price or could be the price from 10 years ago so <laughs> so i'll create some episode graphics with these photos but it really looks like somebody like it's, this is the sort of thing where if somebody made homemade cabinets for their oh yeah their garage they're in their barn or something you yeah know? in a barn or in a garage it doesn't even look good i mean it's like it was made by somebody who doesn't really know how to make kitchen cabinets it's very it's, rough. It's very rough. It's rough wood. It looks like a garage setup. Yeah. Honestly. And there's no modern showplace cabinetry here. <laughs> no, no. It's well it's, lit. And it's a con- in a concrete floor and you know, there's nothing yeah. yeah. You know, it's just to get your cooking supplies here. Right. Uh, right. So they do have a this wall display with hanging copper pots and pans, so that's kind of decorative, but I think that's their few efforts for, for decoration. good looks. Yeah, for decoration. <laughs> and then they sell uh, aprons and they sell all of the things that you could, like every type of knife, every type of, of pincer, uh, circle things to make various cakes of various sizes. I mean, they really have a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's interesting just to go in and look and try and figure out what everything is yeah, used for. Yeah, what is that what is for? for? <laughs> yeah, and they... And they um, they, they're not super helpful. Like, oh, no. You, no, you just no. go in there and... But they don't throw you out and, you know. No. But no, no you, you know, they're not going to... Nobody's going to come up to you and ask you if they can help you. No, <laughs> no. And and what they do is they... Um, like, if you know exactly what you need, if you go in there saying, I need an oyster knife, but it needs to be shorter or longer for some reason, they'll find it for you. But if you just go in there and you just go browsing, then nobody's gonna ask you anything. Like, it's yeah. A lot of professional chefs, you know, they'll send their helper over there with a list of things and they'll gather them up. And yeah. Then get in and get out. Yeah, like this thing. I don't know what it is. Do you know what that is? I think that's a meat tenderizer. A meat tenderizer. Maybe like you beat your meat with it to right. tenderize okay. it. Right. Okay. That's my guess. But yeah. I don't know what most of these things are. <laughs> yeah, well, there's plenty of things. And these were had... two guys looking at the prices. Yeah, like trying to saying, figure it out. Trying to figure out what the price was, you know. Like what object it was, what price it might be. Right, and so what surprised one young couple that was in there at the same time as me is that when they picked out 
what they wanted, mm. the, the guy who worked there took it from them and put it behind the counter. And so when you come back oh, to you pay, can. then you get it, but they don't want you putting it in your bag. That's what they're worried about, I'm pretty sure. It's not a place that has lots of cameras or high technology. So. No, no, no. And then one place we didn't, we didn't include in this, but I went to Galerie Lafayette on oh, that yeah, same they, day. Yeah, they have uh, some be, beautiful. They have some very yeah. nice stuff. Again, it's more like Sur la Table and William yeah. and Sonoma yes. than uh, these other stores. Um, the Galerie Lafayette near op, the Opera House, the mm -hmm. Opera Garnier. That's the one that has a lot of specialty foods and... They have a big wine selection. And oh, that's right. They have yeah, a really big, big yeah, wine. And but so does like the Beaumarché has some beautiful stuff over in the south. Yeah, uh, yeah. They, they have a whole giant cove and they have a beautiful restaurant and then two or three floors of you know, yeah. housewares. yeah. So that's it, and, that, and this is all within the Isle, and you can go walk around all these things. I, like, I'm sure, even if you stop and look at a lot of stuff, two hours is probably mm -hmm. sufficient. Yes. Yeah. And some of these things would be a good place for a gift or for something you've always wanted, but it's probably for serious cooks. I mean, it's probably for serious pastry and, yeah. and, and cooks, so... All right, so I'm going to uh, thank a few people who support the, the podcast, and then we have some stuff to tell you about. We went to America, okay. the two of us, in like four hours. Four. We went to America. Yeah, a short trip. Okay. <laughs> so I need to thank Paul Rain, Paul Trainer, Joanna, Eric, and Chris Ramassini for pledging to support the show, and also Johnny Spanish. Uh, they all pledged... Uh, in the last couple of weeks and it's bizarre because now patreon lets people pledge without giving their last name hmm. so i would ask you please give your last name because then when i try to invite you to the secret facebook group if all i know is that your name is eric that makes you hard to find because i have a few patrons and so i have a few erics and a few joannas probably as well so it would be good um and so when you join the patreon you join for a specific reward but you get all the rewards anyway, um, <laughs> because if I put it out there, you might as well enjoy it. So if you want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com forward slash join us, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, and you can uh, look at the different reward tiers. And thank you so much for giving back. And also uh, Coral White sent in a one-time donation and she did that by using the green button on uh, the join any page on Join Us in France that says tip your guide. It's a little green button. So this week, <laughs> let's tell them about Costco. <laughs> <laughs> and we're in France. <laughs> we're in Paris. We're in Paris. And I had heard that there was a Costco in Paris and I came up to finish up the a couple of tours that I wrote. So uh, let me explain a little bit. These GPS aware tours, they're wonderful, but they need to be tested. And Patricia here had tested it once. And then I came up once to test them and I realized that there were a lot of things I wanted to change. And because I had changed so many things, they said, listen, you have to test them again. And so I did. I tested uh, Ile de la Cité and Le Marais again. And this time I made very minor changes, just added a few directions to tell you, oh, you know, look at the flag and go right or something. And so, uh, and I also, I'm writing a new one for Montmartre. Um, and that was very fun. I, I it, actually, it's the most fun I've had in Montmartre forever, because I've been there and I found it very uh, stressful. But the way I did it, I kept the stressful bit for the end. So I start in the nice quiet parts of Montmartre where you get to see all this beautiful scenic stuff and then you have to go see Place du Tertre <laughs> because you have to when you're in Montmartre you have to but you finish there so it, I found it really good and also I don't know what's happening but I didn't see a single pickpocket in Montmartre I saw some in other places in Paris on this trip, but not uh, and in no string mafia either. The yeah, no, like no string mafia either. Mm -hmm. Those are the people who try to tie mm -hmm. a string bracelet on yeah. your wrist. Yeah, and it's just a distraction while they're emptying your pockets and unzipping your. And this time, nobody tried to unzip my my bag, which was good. 
because I took, even though I had a clipboard, I took a bag big enough that my clipboard could be in front of me and not in the back. You, you really don't want a backpack. It's too easy to rob. So just, just word for the wise. Anyway, so that's why I've, I came to Paris and it was a lovely trip and, and Patricia uh, loaned me her guest room, which is lovely. And she makes the meanest breakfast. <laughs> I'm telling you, Patricia's <laughs> breakfast is quite something. So, so yeah. <laughs> Thank you, it's very simple. <laughs> no, it's really good. And so, and so I had an extra day and I had told myself, if I have time, this time I wanna go to Costco. So this is what we did. We went to um, Gare Montparnasse this morning to rent a car. And when they told me how much it was going to be, I just about fainted. <laughs> they wanted, <laughs> like the cheapest one wanted 170 euros for the day. And I'm like, what? And we went to another one. It was like 200. And the other one was 220. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's going the wrong direction. <laughs> yeah. So I pulled out my phone and looked at Uber. And there you go. Uber was quite a lot cheaper than all of that. So we got an Uber pool. So this is another thing. I had never taken Uber pool, but I did this time. And it worked out really well because it was just the two of us anyway. Yeah. <laughs> because mm. if you're going in the boonies to Costco, who else? What are the chances that other people want to go there too? Yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. Is, so it was just the two of us and we got the Uber pool price. Yeah. So it was good. So he drives us out there. It took, what, maybe 40 minutes to, yeah. to drive? Yeah. You but, know? Yeah, without... But it's a good piece away. I mean, there were no traffic. Yeah. Uh, there was no traffic, so that's going at highway speed a lot of the time. Yeah, yeah. So you, it's it's not close. No, it's not it's super close. It's past Orly to the south. Yeah, of Paris. Right. It's in the something Yvette, whatever. Oh, yeah, Ville, Villebonne. Villebonne les Yvettes or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's it's a, the village before it looked yeah, very, very quite a little yeah. yeah a little you know yeah. it looks like. A village in France, not a particularly scenic one, but a really fine place, and uh, and then the Costco is in the middle of the fields. Yeah, it's like, like at the middle of the fields, there's this yeah. Costco. <laughs> yeah, hooray! Right. A Costco. Okay. I haven't been to a Costco since Christmas. Yeah. So if you knew me in person, you'd know that's a long time for me. So, <laughs> so I just uh, I just wanted to see it, and you know what? It's just like Costco's in America. Yeah, it's like walking into a little little America there. But it was mostly French people. It was. Oh yeah. I yeah. think I heard English once, oh. and it was pretty full. So French was, people are digging it. It was a Saturday, so they. It was yeah. a Saturday afternoon, yeah. so they are digging it, and I'm, I was very surprised. But you find all the same products you'll find in France, in America. So you know Kirkland brand toilet paper, like the big old things. You, you I mean, everything you'd find in America. The only thing I noticed that they didn't have is the. The instant pots, they had oh, yeah. like they sold uh, uh, pressure cooker, a pressure cooker, cooker, a regular old pressure cooker at a very good price, by the way, because I bought one not so long ago and it was a lot more money than that. But, but you know, they sell the office supplies. They sell. They even have sheet cake. I didn't know French people ever ate sheet cake. <laughs> they also had lots of French food though too. Yes, Cheesy, all the cheeses were French, and yes, you know, uh, a lot of the French specialty foods they they had there. Right. So they had like. They had this thing that was the uh, petit camembert, so a little kind of prepared f to put to to put in your oven to bake for like an appetizer or whatever. <clears throat> that looked good. I, like, mm, I could eat that, but of course, since we were in giant size of everything, though. Yeah, giant yeah, size yeah. of everything, and we didn't have a car, so there was no way we were gonna bring back a lot of stuff. I, I bought a couple of small items, but just small things. So I just want to say that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that when you come to Paris, you do not want to go to Costco. I mean, I'm... But your card will work here. It's glorious. But your card will work here. So for those of you who are moving to France, if you have a Costco card, you can use it at the Costco, and uh, they won't give you any trouble, and they'll take your money. They're good that way. They'll take your money anywhere you, you can have it. And, and then when we were done, so we looked at everything, you know, the obligatory, you have to walk through everything. And uh, we took the public transportation back. Yeah, it wasn't bad. And it wasn't bad. So uh, that involved walking maybe a couple of kilometers to yeah, the bus Yeah, about a 15-minute walk. Yeah. Oh, that, then it's not even a couple of kilometers. It was maybe yeah, yeah. half a kilometer. Yeah. Because it didn't take that long. Yeah, 15 minutes to a bus station. That was probably the, 
the most confusing part because it was you know you're kind of out in the middle of nowhere like where's the bus station yeah uh, but you know if you've got a GPS yeah if you have an app Google Maps you'll be fine yeah yeah and apparently weekdays they actually have right. a little shuttle that takes you back to the bus stop which is nice yeah but they, we went so, on a Saturday so they didn't have it and then we took so one bus. It came right away. It was coming frequently. Yeah, yes. It's Unlike buses that come once an hour, this one came like every few minutes or five, ten minutes. Perhaps. Yes, yeah, yeah, which yeah. seeing that we were in the boonies, that's, a, that's surprising. But Yeah, on a weekend. <laughs> yeah, in August. And on, yeah, like this is <laughs> as good as it gets, yes. you know, in terms of public transportation. Yeah, and then we took the RER, which we didn't have to wait for either. It yeah. just worked out. RER is B. And then we change to... Depends on where you're going in Central right, Paris. Right. Then, the then, RERB yeah. will take you to Central Paris and then you just go to right. whatever and so, part of town. So it was fairly easy. It was a little longer doing it with the public transportation, but it's doable. So just so you know, it's, it's not a scary thing. So what else has happened to me? No, that's it. I, I, I've, so when I, get, when I go home on Monday, I'm going to uh, start recording those tours so I'm hoping that now I'm seriously close because that's the last step. They, and uh, it was very interesting because they have an actual audio engineer who, uh, when I, <laughs> so I did a test recording and I sent it to him the same way I, I do the podcast. And uh, he sent it back like, uh, that's not very good. <laughs> I was like, oh, come on. <laughs> You're picky, aren't you? And he's like, well, I'm an audio engineer. So, um, so he's going to edit the audio. He's going to he's gonna make me sound sexy. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we'll see, we'll see. Um, but he's also going to, I hope, to talk him into teaching me how to do this myself. Because, I mean, it'd be nice if I could get... Yeah, it's probably minor adjustments, maybe. Yeah. I'm, I'm so probably... it's something you can do on your own and... With... Yeah not a whole lot of work, then right. so much well, he, better. He uses a professional software, which I don't have, but I don't think it's going to be that expensive to buy, so I'll probably get it. So it's yeah. not the equipment, it's more on the, the editing side. Yeah, it's the editing software, mm. yeah. He uses something that I'm like, oh, well, I use a freebie, so there you go. Mm. <laughs> you, pay, you get what yeah. you pay for. <laughs> but anyway, so all is well. Um, so I, sh- I will do my best to put out an episode for the rest of uh, each Sunday for the month of August, but... Then late August into early September, I have family coming over, so then I get kind of busy. C'est les vacances. C'est les vacances, yeah. I haven't been to the beach yet. Oui. Come on. <laughs> well, because the thing is, they tell me, you know, this is almost ready. If you'll just go back to Paris and test it, you can put it out. And I was kind of motivated. Because these tours are fun. I mean... Yeah, they are. There's a lot of good stuff in there. I learned a lot of, a lot of things, so they're very enjoyable and... You can take them at your own pace, so it's perfect. Yeah, and I, I really think if you, like the, okay, so Ile de la Cité one, you walk in front of the Saint chapelle Now, I can't guide you through the Saint chapelle because it's a GPS tour, and so GPS won't work indoors. But uh, if you just pause the tour at that point, go into the Saint chapelle come out, then go a little further along, you go to the Conciergerie, I also tell, tell you who should would be interested in the conciergerie, and if you do that too, well, this, it's an hour tour, it would last all day, because you'd be yeah, adding if, other things. You stay. And you can preview it beforehand, or if you didn't hear something when you get home, you can go back and listen to it, so. Right, see, that's yeah. something I, I didn't realize, is that you can actually, once you download it, you can listen to it, and, and, you can, and it works if you don't have data. Because it's, you've downloaded it. And as a matter of fact, I think it might work a little better if you put your phone in airplane mode. Uh, unless you have Bluetooth. No, but if you have Bluetooth headphones, it still it, works with airplane yeah, mode, doesn't it? Yeah, or it depends. Even with airplane mode, you can usually modify it to, okay, no, but I want Bluetooth on. Right. And I want GPS on. So right, right. It depends, yeah. on, it depends on your phone's airplane mode parameters. Yeah, but you do need... GPS. Yeah. It works on GPS. So it's a download that works on GPS, but GPS works pretty much anywhere except inside of buildings. Anyway, so th- that was a lot of fun, and I'm planning on doing more of those, although I'm going to finish up the one in Montmartre, and then I'll probably do some in the south where it's closer to home. Uh, although I might have to do all the little towns around the Costco. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you now you have a, a reason to go to. 
<laughs> Les banlieues. Yeah, well, that's, that's my favorite place in Paris now. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's not. I'm just kidding. But I do like a good visit to America. You know, like you're in the middle of Paris and, oh, let's go to America. Fun. <laughs> yeah, they did have some things I've never seen in France before. They had sockeye salmon. I've never seen that in France before. And they had jalapeno poppers. I've never seen yeah. that in France before. So, yeah. a few little things that... The sheet cakes. I've never yeah, seen so sheet yeah, cake. Yeah. Uh, they, <laughs> they had a bunch of things that French people... But they were digging it. French people were digging it. They, <laughs> you know, I mean, there were some people, it was clear that they were small restaurants, probably. Y yes. Yeah, so, mom and pop restaurants. Yeah. Because getting they were, basic supplies. Right. They were buying, like, you know, 100 pounds of chicken. chicken. Yeah. <laughs> so, clearly, that's for a restaurant. But, but they were, it was mostly families. Yeah. Um, uh, not as many kids as in Utah, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, there's not many places that have many kids. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's, uh, it was really a pleasant little... And they sell the hot dog. Oh, but it's a rip-off. The hot dog here is two, uh, two euros. <laughs> Over there, it's only a euro, a dollar fifty, right? unless they changed it. And, but they did give away a free sample. Oh, and there were samples. So here, a free sample of a hot dog and some beer, a Bud Light. Oh, yeah, the sample of beer was weird. I mean, I didn't take it, yeah. but... It, <laughs> Never see that in the U.S. <laughs> yeah, probably not. And they had a big wine selection. Yeah, they did. Uh, a nice wine selection. Which, And a lot know, of champagne, high-end stuff that people might buy for a party, I think, you know. Right, right. Yeah, it was, it was just a fun little outing. I don't know. We live in France. We have to entertain ourselves one way or the other. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like the opera, only different. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you so much uh, for letting me stay and oh, also my for, pleasure. Come for, back. for going yeah. you know, to visit all these things and testing the tours and all of that. You're wonderful. <laughs> it's my pleasure. It's been a lot of fun. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening, and I will talk to you next week. Au revoir. The Join Us in France Travel Podcast is written and produced by Annie Sargent and copyright 2019 by Addicted to France. It is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. <laughs>